Welcome to the second film in our stairs series, in which we examine the various components that go to make up a staircase. I hope that you all remember that in our series of films on floors and ceilings, we said that ceilings require openings for the installation of stairs from one floor to another. We explained that this opening should ideally run parallel to the span direction rather than at right angles to it. There are several ways of closing in the sides of a flight of stairs. Here, they're closed in by two walls. As a result, the stairs run through a sort of shaft that is the same width as the opening in the ceiling at the top. The walls run in the same plane as the banister runs along the edge of the opening on the left-hand side. The other option is open-sided stairs. This requires the opening in the ceiling to be wider than the staircase so that the banisters along the stairs and around the opening do not collide. The space between the edge of the ceiling opening and the stairs is called the well hole. All open-sided stairs have a well hole which is often at least 20 cm wide due to the complex geometry of the banisters. These two methods of closing in stairs can also be mixed with a wall running up one side of the stairs and a well hole on the other, for example. The photograph shows the stairs in our research laboratory in Leipzig. They feature this mixed design and connect several stories. This diagram shows some of the terminology relating to stairs. The flat platform on which you place your foot is known as the tread, the vertical face at the back of the step as the riser. The first step is referred to as the bottom step, the last as the top step. The letter A indicates the tread depth or going, the letter S the rise. The platforms at the top and bottom of a set or flight of stairs are called landings. The stairs between them are known as a flight or string of stairs. All stairs need a handrail to provide support for moving up and down. All stairways with a well hole require a banister to prevent users from falling. Another essential term in stair design is the nominal landing edge. This is the transition point from the horizontal floor to the angled flight of stairs. The line of this nominal landing edge plays a very important role in ensuring that the underside of the stairway is attractively designed. When the sides of a staircase are closed by a wall, they must be joined to the wall. This can be done by applying an elastic joint sealant, as shown on the photograph on the right, or by means of skirting board, as shown on the left. Skirting boards conceal the point at which the two surfaces join. They are particularly popular with cleaning staff because they make it possible to clean the floor without getting the walls dirty. If you want to avoid the skirting board following the zigzag line of the individual steps, it's possible to fit triangular skirting that follows the upper edge of the pitch line of the stairs. This skirting can even be offset to include the front edge of the stair. Here you can see a flight of essential stairs in our Provost Church in Leipzig. Given the nature of the project, we just had to use this form of skirting known as Bishop's Mitre Skirting for its resemblance to the traditional headgear worn by bishops, including the one who officiated at the church consecration ceremony. Summary There are several ways of closing in the sides of a flight of stairs. One is with a wall on either side so that the stairs run through a sort of shaft that is the same width as the opening in the ceiling at the top. The other option is open-sided stairs. This requires the opening in the ceiling to be wider than the staircase so that the banisters along the stairs and around the opening do not collide. The space this creates is called the well hole and it must be at least 20 centimetres wide. Our stairs series continues with film number three in which we examine how stairs and staircases are dimensioned.